All right, guys, today we're going to talk about something that I think is pretty fun. Maybe no one else will, but I want to do a kind of follow-up video because I know most of my audience definitely appreciates the fixed blades uh, more than they do the folders, even for EDC. But I thought today I would talk about uh, the Knife Collector's Perfect fixed blade. And for me, I think that this video is um, going to be kind of fun because I did a folder video or essentially like an EDC knife video on this one talking about why I think hinder knives are like the perfect collector's uh, knife. And I think that these fixed blades I'm going to talk about here have a lot of very similar properties, it, all the while being their own kind of unique beast. So I think for a knife collector, <laughs> I think for a knife collector, one of the most perfect brands and probably knives to go with has to be anything in Bark River's lineup. Now, in my opinion, I chose the Bark River knives. Now, in my opinion, I chose the Bark River knives Bushcrafter because I think the Bushcrafter, while not necessarily an EDC knife specifically and not necessarily a, you know, like, um, survival knife specifically. It's one of those knives that can fit a lot of rolls very, very well. And of course, for this one in particular, I am talking about the original Model 1 and preferably in CPM 3V, like this guy is here. So this is like in my mind what would be very close to the perfect fixed blade for a collector. And I think that this is a knife that they are honestly just really good blades. And I want to start off first with why I think that this, or the first reason why I think that this truly is a good collector's knife um, is first off very similar to Hinder's um, Bark River, whether it's something like the Bravo One, whether it's something like the Bushcrafter, the Aurora, any of the many knives that they have out there, they almost always come in a lot of different styles, whether they are different blade steels, different handle materials, um, different blade thickness, thicknesses, blade lengths, really everything. Um, Bark River will offer, you know, very similar models like, you know, say the Bushcrafter. They make the Bushcrafter uh, 2, which is the larger model. They make the Bushcrafter lightweight. Um, so there's different, you know, styles of the same basic model of knife. And so once again, they also make different steels, many different handle materials. So whether you're trying to, you know, fit a particular knife into your collection, whether that's, it has to be a certain color, a certain steel, certain length, a certain, you know, uh, thickness. Um, Bark River does have a lot of good models for that, that, you know, encompass different sizes, different steels, different materials. And so I think that that's first one of the biggest reasons why Bark River has to be on the list. The second for me, and this is something that is genuinely very hard to explain to people until they experience Bark River, is the ergonomics. I think this is something that a lot of people don't like to believe me, and they immediately just jump to the forms and they're like, oh, you know, Bark River is so bad because they're, you know, this, that, or the other. But honestly, one thing that even if Bark River was as bad as many people claim them to be, and one thing that just redeems it for me is that I have to say whoever is in charge, I don't know who it is at Bark River, of the ergonomics on every single Bark River I've ever held, whether it uses, or whether they use wood scales, whether they use micarta, whether they use G10, um, regardless to the model in particular, whether it's you know, a Bravo 1, Bravo 2, a Bushcrafter, you know, all of them, they, the ergonomics just feel incredible. And, you know, each knife, each model has its own ergonomics, but they all feel so good in the hand. And maybe it's just me, but I really don't think so because I've talked to a lot of people who have experienced Bark River knives. And one of the first things pretty much everyone says about a Bark River knife is that its ergonomics are really, really good. And I do have to second that because I have never never handled a Bark River that's like stock from factory that has felt uncomfortable in the hand. They always just feel right. And not just right in like, you know, a normal grip, but in any type of grip that you would hold them in, especially your more tactical knives where, you know, you might go into a reverse or ice pick grip. You might hold it in a more standard grip. Like everything just feels right. And so ergonomics are one of those things that I think until you feel like a knife that is very, very well squared away in the ergonomics department, you really don't know what you're missing because when a knife just feels like it fits like a glove, it really makes the knife, as far as a usability standpoint, 
so much better. And so that is the other big thing that I just absolutely love about these knives is that they feel so gosh darn comfortable. Now, the other thing I like for the vast majority of Bark Rivers is the overall thickness and hard use kind of mindset. A lot of these knives are very much designed for absolute hard use. Now, some of them like the Aurora, which I no longer have, are not the most durable, still pretty durable overall, but you know, they're not like the most durable, but things like this uh, CPM 3V Bushcrafter, things like this uh, A2 Bravo 1, uh, I can take an absolute pounding. Like you can beat the heck out of these knives, especially any of their CPM 3V models. You can absolutely wallop these things and obviously they will not skip a beat. And that is something that I really appreciate with a good general purpose field knife because in EDC, you know, you might not uh, be really putting a knife through its paces, but I can guarantee in any serious bushcrafting applications, you will likely be putting that knife through its paces Cases and running it through the ringer. And so having a knife that can take an absolute beating and just keep pushing forward is very nice. Now, lastly, I think the reason why these make excellent collector's knives is that I do think, and once again, this is a personal opinion, similar to the hinderers, but I do think that most Bark Rivers are pretty gosh darn good looking. I think that they are pretty pretty good like collector's knives and I think they're one of those really good balances where once again very similar to Hinderer XM18s, XM24s and stuff like you can look at them admire the quality you know look at this blade and be like wow you know it's a really nice looking knife but then also take it out into the field and beat the heck out of it and it's still going to work very well so I think that that's another really good advantage to uh Bark River knives is that they definitely uh, they definitely look the part and also act the part. Uh, yeah. And I think that's also really um, apparent when you go to look at secondary or used knife prices on Bark Rivers. They are very similar to Chris Reeve. Like regardless to what you think about Bark River as a company, regardless to what you think of the owner, um, you know, regardless to what you may feel about this company, the used or secondary market prices on these knives are still extremely competitive. These knives sell very quickly um, and they are wanted by lots of people. I mean, I can guarantee you that, you know, if I wanted to, I could go sell this Bark River by the end of today. Like I could sell this knife um, on one of the Bark River forums and, uh, or I could list it, I should say, and have it sold by the end of the day. I could probably have it sold within a couple hours, to be completely honest. And I only say that not to try to flex my, you know, superiority or anything like that, but I have actually sold um, Bark Rivers before, and they move incredibly fast, um, regardless to, like I said, regard there's some people that come to the comments and they're like, oh, you know, those Bark Rivers, you know, they're just so bad. And I, f I feel like a lot of people think that they're garbage, but it's like, you know, I think the ultimate proof is in the pudding where it's like, you know, you can say what you want, but these things move incredibly fast if you try to sell them, um, even for, you know, reasonable prices. Like we're talking competitive prices where maybe you're like, you know, $10, $15 below brand new pricing, you know, they will still move incredibly fast. So anyways, that is my experience with Bark Rivers. I'm not saying that's the most important part for a collector, but it is an important factor to not necessarily bank on, but show that, you know, these knives are valuable. People do like them. They are solid choices. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.